biggest mammals to travel our Earth. Majestic and powerful, the proud rulers of the savanna. Their memories are proverbial. They say an elephant never forgets. But elephants are also empathetic, helpful and gentle. They surprise us with their capabilities. Just how do they manage to find water holes so unnervingly? How do the gentle giants communicate with one another? And why do hundreds of them, as if reacting to a secret command, simultaneously appear in specific locations? The pachyderms are by far more intelligent than we have ever presumed. Just what do we really know about them? Let's take a closer look, closer than ever before. They were once prevalent across the entire continent, but African elephants are becoming increasingly rare. Their stocks are only assured in Botswana. And rising. Roughly a third of all African elephants live here, all made possible due to strict protective measures and a consistent anti-poaching policy. There are especially many of them on the riverbanks to the north of Botswana, close to the Namibian border. Food and water is available throughout the year. During the drought, the riverbanks act as an assembly point for elephants from the entire region. But what is it that turns this land here into a paradise for elephants? Botswana is more than double the size of the United Kingdom. With a population of two million, it's one of the world's least populated countries. There are 130,000 elephants here, especially in the north, at the major river systems of Okavango, Kwando, Linyanti, and Cholbe. The dry season in Botswana's north. Powerful bulls are on the move. Their way through the scorching heat leads them along ancient foot-trodden paths. The destination, the only waterhole, near or far. The animal's sense of direction is unique. Even after years, they can still find familiar places, thanks to their elephant's memory. Their ability to navigate is essential to their survival. One ill-chosen path could mean the death penalty. They can sense the presence of water from afar. Some are already there, bulls from the vicinity, led here by memory and their finely attuned instincts. Elephants can perceive water from five kilometers away. As is often the case, the last step is the hardest. The muddy water is not the most refreshing of drinks, 
but just right for a good shower. The fine layer of mud is a perfect sun blocker and also keeps parasites at bay. The bulls will spend the next few hours in this veritable spa administering mud packs. Their overheated bodies need a good cooling down. The bulls are huge. They can be four meters tall and weigh seven and a half tons. The heaviest known bull is said to have weighed 10 tons. That's a lot of bull, however you look at it. Each of them wants the best place in the pool, so a lot of pushing and shoving is inevitable. In actual fact, elephant bulls are loners. It's no surprise then that the communal bath can cause a fair amount of stress. Serious disputes are, however, a rarity. They are all aware of the pecking order. And before long, they can all enjoy the water games. It's predominantly males that meet at the watering hole. One can roughly determine their age by their head shape. Old bulls' heads resemble an hourglass. The tusks also reveal their years. One notices that they are not particularly big. The quality of their food determines the tusk weight. In Botswana, it's low in nutrients. The tusks are accordingly smaller than those of their Kenyan counterparts, for example, where full-bodied green grows on volcanic soil. But the hunt for especially large examples is the main reason why the tusks remain small. There are hardly any more giants that could propagate. Therefore, animals with the smaller tusks multiply instead. In certain regions, poaching has even led to elephants with absolutely no tusks at all. So far, so bad, as tusks play an important role in the animal's social lives. Clear signals indicate to others who the boss is. Deployed purposefully, the tusks are useful as an effective means of settling disputes among conspecifics. Shaking his head, the weaker retreats. Together, the young bulls playfully assess the extent of their own strength. In this way, they practice tactics that they will possibly need should they find themselves in danger. This sparring with friends decides the ranking order at an early age and avoids serious conflicts. <laughs> Elephants are nomads. A herd of females 
traverses the barren land. An alpha cow leads them. She is the biggest, eldest, and most experienced of the herd. Unerringly, she brings her group to the best pastures and watering holes. With great consideration for the weakest, she makes the decisions regarding when and where they go. The young and related females with their offspring follow the matriarch. The animals cover roughly 20 kilometers per day. Knowledge of the hiking trails is age old and is passed down from generation to generation. The heat is relentless. The little ones have difficulty keeping up. During the dry season, the matriarch shows her real skill. She has to lead her herd to the desired goal and cannot afford to make any mistakes. The fate of the entire group rests on her shoulders, as it were. The giants march almost without a sound. The thick, leathery skin at the base of their feet serves as a cushion and absorbs the impact of the weight. Thorns or sharp stones underfoot go unnoticed. Eating is an elephant's priority. They spend up to 19 hours looking for food. They don't even stop at bark and wood. An elephant can eat 300 kilograms of plants within 24 hours. This has consequences. Hardly any other animal creates his own environment like they do, which affords them greater ecological significance. But there are those who feel there are too many elephants in Botswana. They apparently ravage the land and must be decimated. But is it really so dramatic? For the most part, nature regulates itself. When a particular area can no longer supply its animals with food, they die or move to other regions if one lets them. The group must move on. The youngest member of the family is gently shoved. Older siblings and aunts also accept responsibility. Elephants are social and foresighted. The entire herd is considerate in regard to offspring. Whenever necessary, the little ones are allowed a break in the shade. For most animals, the drought is energy sapping. Giraffes are comparatively better off. Grazing up on high, they have no competition. But even there, buds are few and far between. Lunchtime, and it's 42 degrees in the shade. The herd treats itself to a brief respite. Hardly any other animal needs so little sleep as an elephant. Two hours are generally enough. They mostly doze in standing and let their trunks rest on the ground. They rarely sleep lying down, and they don't even slumber in one stretch, preferring 15 to 20 minute long intervals. 
Heat makes one thirsty. Young elephants are dependent on their mother's milk for around two years. Even the newborn drink roughly 11 liters daily. No wonder they weigh 90 kilograms at birth, making them 25 times heavier than a newborn human. This baby just about fits underneath its mother's belly, proof that it cannot be older than one year. Is this one thirsty or just bored? Watched over by the adults, he sleeps safely. I wonder what he's dreaming of. Perhaps of being able to fly. To be condemned to do nothing is a hard test for all of the little ones. The rest of the troop gradually begins to move. The matriarch wants to go. Carefully, the last sleepyhead is awakened and is given a gentle invitation to get up. And then they're off. One of the babies has a limp and can hardly keep up with the others. Cautiously, the family places the little one in its midst, well protected against predators. Sometimes, however, an animal is so badly injured that the herd can no longer help. Laboriously, the elephant cow drags herself along. Her hind leg is inflamed. The herd moves on. The animals are in desperate need of water. The old elephant cow is at an end. Her youngster doesn't know what to do. He appears apathetic and weakened. Situations like this give us some idea of the strong unity and great sensitivity of the elephants. The death of his mother will tear a deep hole in his life. If the little one doesn't find a connection to the herd, he will also die. This elephant baby has lost contact to the herd. It wanders through the bleak countryside, helpless and disoriented. The little bull is totally emaciated he is in urgent need of milk and care. The bulls at the watering hole cannot replace a mother. One cannot expect too much of them. The search for friends has led the little one here. The males show interest, but they cannot help him.
only consolation is a little refreshment. It seems as though the whole world has turned its back on him. Even the muddy water is no alternative to nutritious mother's milk. The little one must be careful not to be crushed or drowned by the impatient beer moths. He keeps begging for help, but is just as often snubbed. Bulls are anything but family animals. They think little of babysitting. In a herd of females, he would immediately be freed from his predicament by one of the mothers. But here, no one supports him. Normally, young elephant bulls rarely seek the proximity of large males before they reach 14. Then they leave the female clan and learn the code of conduct from the old bulls. But this little midget here is much too small to learn from the old giants. With a mixture somewhere between rejection and interest, they let him go into an uncertain future. One of the bulls seems friendlier. But only for a fleeting moment. Tiny and alone, the baby's fate is sealed. and they have nothing to do with it all. It was foreseeable. The little elephant didn't make it. During the dry season, fatalities also under the adults rise. Distances between the feeding grounds and waterholes are now longer, and some just don't make it. This animal died of thirst. Water can't be far away. The bull has a lot of mud on his skin. He must have bathed a short time ago. Cautiously, he examines the dead animal. He probably knew it. Does he understand the situation? Is he grieving? Is he suffering from the loss of his comrade? This is how we would probably interpret it if he were a human being. Why shouldn't an intelligent animal have similar feelings, the same as we do? Why should animal behavior always stem from inborn instincts, when our behavior is almost always accredited to the mind? Elephants often behave in the same way as we do. Intelligence and compassion as a survival strategy. 
Why should this only be the case with human beings? The female herd is still on the move. The matriarch goes her own way, as if she had a map in her head. The average elephant brain weighs around five kilograms, this means there's a lot of room for an entire row of impressive capabilities and behavioral patterns. Suddenly, the animals move faster. Something is driving them on. they reach their destination, the banks of the River Cholbe. Many other elephants have also found their way here. The giants have to drink every day. They have a water intake of up to 200 litres the amount needed to fill a bathtub. But water is not just there to drink. arrive. Once, gatherings like this were quite common in Africa, but now you can only find them in a few areas. As if reacting to a secret command, they arrive from every conceivable direction. The elephants here are border crossers that often ford the river between Botswana and Namibia. They're good swimmers, but prefer to wade through water where it is more shallow. Here we see almost exclusively females with their young. Whereas in the hinterland, the bush is grazed and withered, they still find enough grass in the river wetlands. This is the secret of their migration. Rich feeding grounds and water. But for how much longer? The drought continues. Elephant communities are very complex. Mothers with their children, sisters and aunts with their offspring. Together, they form a close-knit family herd. For a while, several families can merge to become greater units. The animals know each other well. From time to time, these groups form gigantic herds that later simply disperse and go their own separate ways. An embedded system like this demonstrates their intelligence and, reciprocally, only a pronounced mind can lead to flexible cohabitation. To be able to nurture widely ramified social bonds requires an extensive vocabulary. Hundreds of different vocalizations are known.
Just now, they arranged to meet at the mud baths. We are unable to hear many of the sounds that elephants make, as the deeper tones in the subsonic range are inaudible for humans. Elephants recognize one another's voices. A matriarch can determine up to 200 conspecifics by their calls, an ability that helps her to coordinate her large family. In the pool, one can simply be an elephant. Their skin at two to four centimeters is hardly what one can call thin, yet it is still extremely sensitive. Bathing regularly helps keep it supple. The mud protects them from ticks and bothersome insects, as well as being an effective sun blocker. It's not such a good choice as an eye cosmetic, but with a practical trunk, it's no problem at all. Until they are three years old, baby elephants have their milk delivered, carriage paid. This leaves them lots of time for comforting water games. For the most part, it's the adolescents that keep an eye on the smallest of the small and give them support. In this way, the young ladies learn the basics in regard to baby care, playfully, for later on in life, when they are mothers themselves. Elephant communities are so complex that the young first have to learn how to be an elephant. The little ones learn this within the group during their long childhood. They learn how to show consideration, take responsibility, and help family members. To support one another is often necessary in the mud bath. The elephant community only works through mutual support. With these two here, the social competence is somewhat underdeveloped. No one helps the other, and so no one gets anywhere. A little apart from the rest, a cow liberates her baby from the mud. She shows great empathy. This scene is the best proof of animals not being soulless automats, as the French natural historian René Descartes once put it. Several bigger birds are trying to help this little one out of its predicament. Really, only human beings selfless, as many believe? Or can certain animals also act with compassion?
Should we not rethink our behavior toward animals, armed as we are with new findings? The oldies show the little ones the right way. Made it. The excited baby is happily received and comforted. Young elephants always remain in touch with their relatives. Just like human children, they need the help and support of their family. Meanwhile, food is growing scarce on the riverbanks. The outstanding intelligence of the pachyderms combined with their gigantic body size, poses a problem. The large brain and their masses require a lot of energy. To be able to solve the dilemma, the giants have to find reliable food and water sources. The elephants are not alone in the area. Large buffalo herds track through the country. They also need grass and water. And for this, they also have to travel a long way. As soon as the buffaloes reach the banks of the Chobe, the lion's interest is aroused. The wild cattle are amongst Africa's most dangerous animals. To confront them demands courage and power. Before long, the huntress becomes the hunted. For lions, an undertaking not without danger. She knows it. Buffalo is confident. The lioness musters all of her courage. But today is simply not her day. The others had a little more luck hunting. This time, they managed to escape with their lives. Nonetheless, the buffaloes should try and keep their distance. Elephants and buffaloes share the habitat, and they eat the same grass. The situation is steadily deteriorating. Food is becoming scarce.
Desperately, the animals scratch their way to the last green. But elephants' feet also have another function. The animals communicate with them. Inaudible for human ears, elephants send out deep frequencies from their vocal cords via the feet and into the ground. The rumble tones spread out as underground vibrations that they can feel with their feet over great distances. In doing so, the animals can exchange vital information concerning grazing grounds or water holes and the like. Thanks to this special hearing ability, elephants can even perceive rain and thunderstorms. One presumes as far away as a hundred kilometers. Then, at last, salvation. The first raindrops fall. Everyone has eagerly awaited the beginning of the rainy season. Many babies are born, and where there was once dry land, water now takes over. The elephants once again spread out all over the country. For them, it's a return to golden times. Water as far as the eye can see, and the plants are rampant. The buffaloes enjoy the young grass in the alluvial soil. The leaves on the trees and shrubs in which the herbivores once more indulge, much more nutritious than grass. There is nothing left to remind us of the bleak drought that only recently prevailed here. After the deprivations of the past few months, the giants can at last be their choosy selves again. In order to satisfy his hunger, an African elephant grinds leaves, bark and grass between his teeth. These are worn out after a few years. New teeth wander from the back end of the jaw in order to retain their grinding efficiency. Should an elephant have worn out all of his 24 molars, he is more or less doomed to starve. Elephants take their time when eating.
Each morsel is carefully chosen and almost chewed to death. An adult eats up to around 300 kilograms of greens every day. A large portion of this finds its way out again through the back door. As elephants like to take long walks every day, and many seeds leave their intestinal tracts, they play an important role in regard to the prevalence of plants in the savanna and ground fertilizing. Baboons find lots of tasty bits and pieces in elephant dung. Butterflies absorb moisture and the minerals. One group of gourmets benefits more than most from the nutritious manure. Dung beetles. They are the refuse disposal experts of the savanna and effectively take care of the heavyweight's droppings. When dung is jettisoned, they are there within minutes. The beetles nibble in order to fortify themselves for forthcoming earthworks. Hustle and bustle on the dung heap. One could also call it recycling. The dung is carried into the cave so that the offspring is provided for. Others shape balls out of it. They are rolled to a suitable location by the scallops and buried once there. A gargantuan task. The ball serves as a food supply and breeding chamber for the offspring. The hatched beetle larvae feed on the undigested leftovers of the elephants. The beetle gang utilizes the dung heap at lightning speed. 24 hours later, and there will be nothing left of it. Elephants. They are a symbol of Africa. Their size alone makes them something special. Their cleverness and sensitivity are unique. They have capabilities and sensory capacities far beyond our imagination. slowly beginning to fathom just how unique the grey giants really are. Strong, yet also gentle. Just what the future has in store for the compassionate giants depends not only on their intelligence, but that of human beings.